I introduce myself. Um, I'm out of the Bay Area. Uh, I live over in Oakland. Um, flew all the way into the fine state of uh, Kentucky here. And um, during my day job, I guess I do a lot of like web app pen tests, security assessment, uh, source code review, that type of thing. Um, and yeah, I work for uh, independent security evaluators. So that's uh, there, there's some really cool folks um, doing some interesting security assessments, and uh, you know some of the the way that I kind of got into this was um, I uh, I got interested in the uh, so hopelessly broken competition at DEF CON a couple years ago, and uh, that kind of got me interested into some of the hardware space and and digging into that a little bit more, and and it's been fun to kind of build. Uh, build on that experience and that's kind of like where I got started with some of the like the router hacking stuff and moved on to, to more like home automation type stuff. Um, and uh, yes, two minutes. Well, I don't know, hold on for one more second. But Okay, yeah, I'm just going to go to the floor. So um, you are in uh, practical hardware attacks against Soho routers and uh, IoT devices. Um, I wanted to kind of put this together as a, uh, a talk um, geared at uh, giving people that are new to hardware hacking, like, you know, a, a, a place to get started, you know, like a, a way to kind of get into this. Because when I, when I first started doing hardware hacking stuff, I, I was completely, like, a software guy had no idea about you know the physics of it or even how to use a multimeter so I had to start there and and start working uh, forward from that point um, so yeah this is just a little bit about ISE we're uh, all uh, over the place I mean we kind of hit up some of the various cons here um, but yeah hackers cryptographers reverse engineers um, uh, there was a bunch of research that was done that kind of founded the company was uh, around some of the uh, like Ford uh, mobilizer um, hacking some of that stuff and then obviously some of the iPhone and Android hacks. Uh, uh, Jacob Holcomb uh, is uh, one of our, our guys as well and he was doing some of the, like the router hacking and NAS stuff uh, a couple of years ago that were that that was kind of really helpful to, to be able to uh, to watch some of his stuff uh, and, get, and get interested in that. So uh, I guess I kind of talked a little bit about who I am, um, but yeah, I'm Chase Schultz. I'm a senior security consultant. Uh, that's my Twitter handle, and it's at the uh, uh, end of the talk, too, so if you want to grab it, you can. Um, but yeah, those are some of my interests, reverse engineering and hardware, um, software-defined radio stuff, fuzzing, and then you know, kind of getting into the uh, embedded systems space has, has been a really good experience as well. So. Okay, so this is pretty much what I'm going to uh, be talking today about. We're going to kind of go through the um, through these items here. We're going to talk a little bit about the hardware hacking and some of the tools of the trade, a little bit into um, some of the methodologies that I've kind of acquired through uh, working and playing around with some of this stuff. And uh, I've got lots of pictures. So uh, if I if I uh, if I speed through it, we'll go to Photo Journal or or whatever have you, um, and uh, and then I've got a demo for you guys today just to kind of solidify. I think that always helps is to be able to see, you know, what some of these uh, like hardware interfaces and what you can do with them. So I've got a uh, a little home automation device uh, down here that I'll power on and I'll walk through uh, the UART interface uh, on it and you know what it looks like just seeing a, a device boot up, that type of thing. So I kind of got into uh, all of this, uh, like I said, with um, the, uh, the router hacking competition at DEF CON a couple of years ago. And I really like that. Um, and then now, you know, there's all this like IoT space stuff. And uh, it's, 
I think, I mean, there's all of these devices. I think IoT is just like another rebranding of machine to machine communication. And, you know, all this stuff has been around for a lot, you know, for, for quite a while. But I think it's now getting to the point where, you know, there's all these toys and little devices. And, you know, now we're supposed to have that, like billions of connected devices in the next, you know, before 2020. Um, so, um, yeah, I got into, uh, this hardware hacking thing, and it was it was kind of an uh, interesting time. I was I was doing like lots of web app stuff, Windows reversing, um, uh, applications, security type stuff, and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to learn some stuff about hardware. And so I uh, I decided, you know, let's let's take the software guide back to school. And uh, um, so the uh, the reason that I got into the hardware hacking stuff is these are like little black boxes. You know, they, they run Linux, they do things, but, you know, you, like trying to pull up like a terminal on them or something like that, you, you just can't get to it without um, like playing around with some of the hardware stuff. So uh, it's a great way to get into a device for initial research. So going through like these UART interfaces or um, playing around with some like JTAG stuff for debugging, it's uh, they're they're really kind of entry um, like points to get in there and kind of start looking at pulling off the binaries or dumping the flash memory, um, and so yeah, we kind of talked about some of the IoT space, um, but yeah, the like smart homes, uh, medical devices, toys, health fitness stuff, I mean Fitbit obviously, um, lots of sensors out there uh, for like your house, like the, uh, I don't know, there I've got a couple of sensors at home that are like doors or like home security type stuff, um, uh, motion sensors, um, all sorts of devices that are hooked up via uh, Zigbee and Z-Wave. Um, so when when I kind of started first thinking about like hardware hacking, I didn't really know what it was. Um, these are like some of the, the terms that kind of I, I at least associate with uh, hardware hacking. Um, so there's UART or Universal Asynchronous Receive and Transmit. And uh, it's, it's basically a uh, wireline protocol or serial protocol, if you will, um, that you can access and it's it's basically like a terminal or like a, a shell access. You There's there's about like four little pins and um, there's a receive and transmit pin, a ground pin, and a VCC pin, uh, which is like voltage um, for the most part. And then uh, also JTAG, which I think has a lot of kind of misconceptions what it is. I mean, JTAG, you've probably heard of it from like Xbox hacking or something like that, you know, being able to do that. But it's uh, it's it's really like a hardware kind of debug interface uh, so that you can run like a debugger and do hardware breakpoints, um, stuff like that. And then finally, uh, SPY and I2C um, are uh, basically the kind of like wireline protocol in between two different components or chips on a board. Um, so you'll have, you know, like the main application processor and then there'll be, you know, like a, a, a spy interface for like the flash uh, chip um, that, that it'll hook up to um, through the traces on the board. And so these these are kind of the, the first um, things that I, I got I, uh, associated with, with hardware hacking. Um, just to kind of think about it that way. So this is um, a, uh, what is this? Oh, this is a camera and uh, home automation device, or like home automation hub. And so you can connect other um, Zigbee and Z-Wave uh, connected devices to it. But um, I, I, when I first was messing around with this, I, I like popped this thing open and it's like uh, trying to put the batteries in and I, I look at it and there's like, little cutout in the back with uh, these like four pins exposed there. So I was like, all right, I wonder if I can play around with this. So the uh, the device, uh, the the Piper uh, NV uh, is the thing on the right there. And then the um, little board that's attached to it is a, uh, a, a device called a Shikra. And it's made by uh, Zibiter. 
Um, so Stephen Ridley, if you haven't uh, seen any of his stuff, he, he really excellent resource for like hardware hacking. He gave a talk a couple of years ago. Um, was it hardware hacking for software people? I think um, so. Definitely check that out if you get a chance. Um, he kind of I, I, when I took his course um, this last year. Uh, he said that he kind of just like made it because he wanted one device to um, kind of rule them all, if you will. So it uh, it handles both um, UART, JTAG, and also as a spy interface uh, if you want to do things like um, dumping flash memory or wiring up to these boards to try and pop a shell. Um, and uh, also, you know, as a JTAG interface with uh, OpenOCD. So, um, kind of like tools of the trade uh, that, you know, when I, I started like building a, a small lab at home, um, it's, it's definitely nothing uh, as professional as like IOActive's lab or uh, some of the like hardcore hardware hacking folks. Uh, you know, I'm just another guy trying to play around with some stuff. So, you know, this is, this is a picture of, uh, you know, my, my desk at home with uh, multimeter and a couple of routers hanging out there and some tools to try and, you know, kind of get in devices. Um, this is, uh, you know, just another another picture of an, uh, another lab bench that I have set up at the house and got like a pile of routers there. It's a pile of ponage as I like to call it. But the, uh, uh, you know, for a while I would just, you know, buy uh, one or two of these routers at a time and I'd be like, uh, well, let's just go see what's on them. And then, for the most part, I, you know, tried to stick to pretty like cheap ones that, you know, some some average consumer walking into Best Buy, you know, what are they going to buy right off the shelf? Um, and so like most of these are like, I don't know, 20 to $40, maybe 50 tops. Um, and you know, popping them open and starting to geek out at the hardware and trying to figure out, you know, what, what type of stuff is on them, identifying like the various interfaces and stuff like that. Um, so this is one of the first to like absolutely, you could, I mean, you could probably get by without it, but like it, they're so helpful. Like the, having a multimeter uh, is like really helpful. This is like a, I think a fluke. Um, multimeter and it can do like continuity testing is the main thing that I use it for that and like monitoring or like uh, probing around for various voltage trying to figure out like what the pins are you know what, what type of system I'm dealing with and uh, stuff like that it's really useful I use it for like pin out reversing so I'll sit there and I'll try to find like ground first um, you know that way I know I've got like a place that is grounded on the uh, the board, and I know that um, you know if I want to like try and and mess with some stuff, or if I if, like a reset pin to ground to, to like halt the device, um, that type of thing. And then the next thing I'll I'll use uh, um, the the multimeter for is like um, on the voltage setting to be able to look at uh, voltages as the um, device is starting up, if I can find like a TX pin sitting on the board and when you plug it in, you'll see like fluctuations. It'll be like at 3.3 volts and it'll drop um, back and forth, back and forth. And that's usually like, you know, one bit, one zero, one zero, one zero. And you'll see that voltage. Like it's, it's, it's funny because it's like an actual physical representation of, you know, what I, what I know are, are probably like some sort of data going across a, a particular line. So um, this is another tool. This is like a, this is the shicker again. Um, got a good picture of it. The link down there is uh, int uh, three. Um, their uh, website there is is awesome. They have lots of cool uh, tools for hardware hackers. Um, I think that they have like the shikra here. I think they also have um, the face dancer from Travis Goodspeed um, and a couple other like devices, but. Yeah, the uh, awesome place and pretty pretty freaking awesome device. Uh, it, it, I have noticed some limitations with it. So like, this is just one interface if I wanted to do UART stuff. There's also like a bus pirate or 
um, Bus Blaster, and then your various different dongles for JTAG and stuff like that. Um, so, but I do like this device because it can do multiple different things. One of the limitations that I finally like ran into recently with the Shikra is it's mainly for like 3.3 volts. So if you get on a system like I was looking at another home automation hub thing and it was 1.8 volts and I was like, oh crap, I can't like hook anything up to this. <laughs> so. I, uh, I, I was lucky to have another tool in my, uh, my tool set that would do it, but uh, as far as like a JTAG interface, uh, I was kind of like shit out of luck. <laughs> so uh, here's uh, another awesome tool. Joe Grand uh, uh, made the JTAGulator a couple of years ago. It's, it's really like one of the best tools as far as um, trying to reverse the pin out, it, it, it will brute force a pin out for you. So like it, say you solder onto a board and uh, you don't know like what which pins are what, you can just like wire up to them and he made it so that it's um, like, uh, you can have different voltages on it and it won't like mess up a board. And uh, I mean if you're, if you're interested in uh, some more of that, go, go check out Joe, Joe's talk. He goes way into depth about it. But, I've really enjoyed this, and it's uh, useful for both UART and uh, JTAG, obviously, um, to try and figure out the, the various pins. And it can also act as a, a pass-through and a couple other things. Um, so obviously, if you're going to do some stuff with hardware, a soldering iron, pretty useful. Um, uh, this is just one from like SparkFun, I think. Uh, but yeah, uh, totally useful for uh, just, you know, uh, soldering on the pins that you might find and identify on there. Um, this is some headers and uh, some jumper wire. So the, when I'm wiring up to a board, this is definitely in use. Um, this is a picture of a Slay logic analyzer. Um, this is really great if you uh, have um, some data going on on the board and you don't know what it is or how it works, you can uh, hook up some probes onto the board and uh, in the Soleil Logic um, program or whatever, and I've I've got some more slides about this later. Um, so, but it it can do some like protocol analysis for you and um, things like that, and you can find that at uh, Soleil.com. Um, so, this is kind of like the methodology that I usually take when I uh, I get into um, a device. So basically, I'll try and pop it open. Um, there's lots of plastic and stupid little security screws. Having a, a nice set of screwdriver heads and that sort of thing is a good thing to have. Like the iFixit kit uh, is, is great, the 54-bit uh, drivers to like pop open some of these uh, things. And then, you know, once I'm actually uh, in the device, you know, looking around at the hardware, um, you know, post voiding my warranty and joining the exploitation party, uh, I will uh, get in there and um, try to identify the various like components and chips. Um, and that's you know pretty easy because they have like little, I don't know, little bits of text of some code or whatever and you can pop it into the, to the internet um, and, and figure out what you know, the actual chips are, that type of thing. Go find the data sheets for it. Um, data sheets for chips will tell you a lot about the various functionality you might find on a on a um, on a particular device, and it's one of the best ways to kind of like actually know what all a um, a chip can do. Um, and then, you know, I'll I'll kind of just like peruse around the hardware looking for like unpopulated pinouts or like unpopulated pads, that type of thing, and then uh, I'll you know, solder some headers onto it and try and figure out what's going on there uh, and do some like continuity testing like I was talking about where the, uh, you know, finding the ground um, pin and then like looking for um, like the TX pin, that, that sort of thing uh, with the uh, like pin out reversing. Uh, Identifying the wireline protocol logic, so that's where the uh, the Soleil logic analyzer comes in, uh, super useful there. Uh, and then, you know, just wiring up to the board, device interrogation, firmware reverse engineering, if I can dump the flash from the device or grab uh, the firmware uh, from, you know, like a network dump as it's updating, something like that. Um, 
And then, you know, I'll get into the, like, uh, the depths of kind of the security research. Once I'm able to pull off some binaries, I'll toss it into IDA, start reversing, or, you know, I'm, I'm, one of the things that I really want to work on next is kind of like a evolutionary feedback fuzzer for ARM and MIPS devices, but, um, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, I'm, I'm totally into. So, first step, void some warranties. Pop open your boxes, um, find your devices, that's the smart things, that's the piper there, um, the wing cub, uh, which was a pretty interesting one, um, and, uh, and then yeah, that's just <laughs> like right over the screw that, that gets you actually into the device. Um, the, uh, read, read your data sheets, um, they definitely are useful, so like this one is, uh, from a flash chip, uh, I was trying to dump it on the uh, Smart Things hub, and I mean, you know, I finally did dump it. But I, I, I when I finally got the uh, the firmware off of there, I, it was complete junk. I, I don't know what it was. It's probably encrypted and needed to do some more uh, reversing on it. Um, but this is great because you can find like the the various pins um, that you need to uh, to hook up to when you do like a spy um, flash dump with a flash ROM. Uh, and then, yeah, just a, another picture there. So as far as like identifying various uh, like hardware interfaces on a board, uh, this is a picture of a uh, UART interface on a, on a, I think this is a trend net maybe, I don't know. But um, the, yeah, so this is UART, and like I said, uh, the four typical pins, ground, VCC, RX, TX, um, all, uh, all right there. Uh, this is a, uh, JTAG interface on a Belkin router, um, before I, uh, soldered some headers onto it. And, uh, it's really nice when, uh, so like this is another one, and this is like a surface mount, um, uh, JTAG interface, or like serial wire debugging, um, interface. And I, the, the wing cub is like a really good example. Uh, they, most of, uh, like most of the stuff that I popped up and they don't like label it as awesomely as, as, uh, as like wink did. So like the UART interface is like very nicely labeled. The JTAG for this chip and they're all just like laid out as discrete units and, um, you can kind of, kind of see it there. Uh, the, the wing cub also has like a number of radios like Zigbee, Z-Wave, Lutron, um, some other weird one I had never heard of. Um, so as far as like the pinout reversing, um, this is uh, kind of how I go about it. Um, before, you know, I, I just started using like the JTAGulator to just figure it out going in there blind. Um, solder on some of the headers here. This is just me doing a little bit of soldering. Uh, pretty terrible at soldering, but I'm good enough to get it into the device. <laughs> Drew over there is cracking up. He's seen my solder. Uh, yeah, and so then, you know, this is like a picture of, uh, hooking up to, like, a ground, like, probing for a ground pin. Um, usually I'll try and find, like, an Ethernet jack or, you know, if they've got some, some covers over it. Um, I will do, like, a continuity test first and then try and find the, um, the TX pin, uh, and go through that, um, one by one. And um, so this is a picture of the Slay logic analyzer, like hooked up to um, the what is this device. Oh, this is yeah. I'm not I'm not ready to name this particular device, but it's the one that's down here that I'll show you guys here in a little bit. And the Slay logic analyzer is, uh, like I said, um, really good for trying to figure out what's going on on a particular chip or interface. Uh, at a given time, and it has um, just a, a a couple of probes that go out. You uh, hook up like the ground pin to make sure that you're you're not going to fry your device when you hook up to it. Um, that that part's pretty important. And then, um, yeah, so you hook it up, and then there's um, like you know the, all the various pins or things that you would want to try and see what's going on. Um, the, the Soleil that I have here, I think can do like eight channels at a time. Um, the little smaller one, 
the like there's a fifty dollar Soleil logic analyzer I think that'll you can do four channels at a time um, and so it's useful when you just kind of want to figure out you know what's going on what the what what the you know the bits flying across uh, things are and um, here is can you guys see that okay so uh, this is the Soleil logic program and um, what it does is you'll see like the the high low high low high low high low and um, what I did here is I, I figured out that this was the TX pin and I applied one of the uh, protocol analyzers to it and uh, this is the uh, asynchronous uh, receive and transmit one and what it'll actually do is it'll show you like the letters that it, and what they you know stand for that type of thing and the uh, the the actual logic on there. Um, so some playing around with like UART and uh, that sort of thing. So here I've got it hooked up to a uh, TrendNet uh, router. The Shikra is hooked up there, and then like the little yellow sticker was not there. That's that's me after the fact. Um, Usually what I do after I've figured out the pinout and stuff like that, then uh, the next step is to like wire up to the board and try and figure out what the baud rate is. So with uh, UART there is like, you, there's a baud rate that's associated with the particular interface. Um, most common is like uh, 11, 50, 200 uh, that I'll find. Um, but you know, there's, there's various different baud rates on some of the devices, um, so that's, that, that is uh, useful to try and like figure out. And there's a, a really cool, I don't know, couple of scripts uh, I think that like Craig Hefner wrote, um, like baudrate.py. And once you're wired up to your board, you can just see it. Um, it it'll, like, it'll just go through various different baud rates and you can see like, it'll either be text or junk. Um, and I've gotten junk a lot and then, you know, I'll go to, I'll switch to a different baud rate and then finally it comes through. Um, so, yeah, the picture that just came up is uh, another, um, uh, that's a TP-Link uh, router that uh, had a, a UART interface onto it. And it's funny with, with some of these, like uh, pretty much all of the home routers that I looked at, you just wired up to them and it drops you straight to a root shell. It's like no password, nothing like that. Like So with, um, with the uh, TP-Link, there was an actual password. But it turns out like um, somebody had already uh, figured it out on the internet for me, and so when I finally did, you know, check it out uh, and grab the hash by um, reverse engineering the firmware binaries um, with like Binwalk and that sort of thing, I pulled open the uh, Etsy shadow file. I just tossed the hash into Google just to see if somebody may have hacked it and. Uh, or cracked it, and uh, it turns out, yeah, sure enough, it was like posted on an unrelated, but well, it was a related uh, TP-Link product, but um, it looks like they're reusing their passwords across multiple things. Anyway, the password was Soho Admin, all lower text, uh, so so it w wasn't wasn't too hard, I guess. But the um, yeah, the, so a lot of them are just like, they'll drop you in. Sometimes there's a password on the interface. Uh, totally depends. Here's like four or five of the various devices. So I've got stuff with D-Link and Belkin and TrendNet and um, a whole bunch of them. There's a couple of Netgears there. Um, and I've got, I've got like a list of, of them there. Um, so like I said, these are just like the various pins that you want to look for. Um, Baud rate, got to figure that out. Uh, this is the pinout for the Shikra. So one one of the things that didn't make sense to me, like when I first started uh, playing around with this, was that oh, I'm just going to wire the RX pin to the RX pin on the board, but it's it's actually the other way around. So you have to do like you do like TX to RX and RX to TX, and then that way you know it it will. Uh, I mean, it, it makes more sense that way actually um, when you when you kind of think about it um, that way. You, you have like the transmitting device and the receiving device, and there's no kind of like crossover there. Um, so this is uh, one of the documentation that comes with the Shikra, but you can see here uh, it does uh, UART, 
um, the JTAG and SPY, um, and uh, it's got like the you know where all the pins are and everything like that. So that's that's definitely useful. Um, so when you get your uh, Shikra or Bus Pirate or JTAGulator or whatever, um, most of the time when I'm in interfacing with one of these like cards or dongles or whatever, uh, I'll, I mean it, they're usually through screen. So you'll run screen and then you'll have the particular like device that pops up in your um, under slash dev and then finally the uh, like baud rate and then that'll uh, drop you in. And so I have I have a demo here in a little bit. Um, I should probably get moving on towards. But uh, yeah, here's another instance of the Wink Hub. The Wink Hub was pretty cool. Um, Xenofx uh, came out with this kind of ingenuitive way of, uh, of bumping the router. So like the, the, with the Wink Hub, when you would boot it up, it wasn't just so kind to just drop you off at a shell. You would you'd see the whole boot and everything like that, and then it would just sit there. You couldn't like... Control X or Control C to try and break out or or anything like that. So what he actually figured out was that you could take and the flash chip that was sitting on the board at the right time during boot up, you could ground that pin, the read pin on the flash chip, and it would basically fail over to the bootloader. So you couldn't get to the bootloader, but just by like mashing a key, uh, like like some of the devices, like I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, but by messing up the read from the flash memory, it dropped them off at the bootloader, and then from there was able to modify uh, the init parameters. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah. So I mean, I've seen like you'll see like press any key to go to the the U boot bootloader. Right. Right, I, th I think so. I think that's that. That's why it failed over. Then I, I had never seen it before. I thought it was kind of cool. It was kind of hard to like get right down on the the pin at the right time. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's probably definitely a, a feature of, of U boot. Um, so yeah, this was this one was kind of cool. Um, so here's like a list of the various devices that I've been playing around with. Um, whether they have like the UART access or JTAG access. Um, I've also gone through and downloaded the firmware for them, walked them with like Binwalk, and and then um, you know looked at the various like password files or uh, you know like like binaries or programs that are are running on the devices, um, some of that stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through um, and go ahead and just show you guys. A uh, quick demo of what this like looks like. Oh, folks, okay. you see here. All right, so, yeah. so uh, this device I've got down here, um, and I should be able to power it up. So let's go here. Is that big enough for everybody to see? Do I need to make it bigger? Bigger. bigger? <laughs> Too big? All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> so here, uh, this is the device as it shows up on, on like a Mac or whatever. Um, under Linux, it could be like dev uh, slash uh, USB TTY zero or something like that. Um, so I'm giving it the baud rate um, that uh, is specific to this device, and I'll start screen. Another thing is uh, with screen that I like to do is uh, I will set like the log on. That way I can get a whole you know log of my like boot uh, as it as it goes up. Um, and so now uh, we'll just flip the switch. And hopefully everything will run. So here we see uh, it's it's going ahead and booting up, and we saw the little part for the U boot bootloader, and it said you know smash any key if you want to go into the bootloader. So that's definitely an option, and so uh, and I don't have it hooked up to uh, the internet or anything, or the like um, the Ethernet jack, so it's going to kind of like fail here for a second. 
Um, yeah, then, then you'll see like the typical like Linux booting up, right? And it turns out with this device, it's actually running a um, embedded version of Ubuntu. Um, and so we get to like a particular like the login here, and you know, oh, I don't, I don't know what the the username and password is, and I can't get to the firmware to just like jack uh, the uh, like pull out the the hash from the shadow file and try and crack it or that type of thing. So um, what I uh, what I you know decided to try and do next was to um, see what that like U boot thing was. So. I'm gonna go ahead and like restart the device again, mash the key, and then um, we get to the U-boot bootloader, and um, you know it's got some functionality. I mean, you can kind of like play around in here and see um, the various different functionality that it has. But one of the ways to get in on some of these devices is to modify the um, the boot parameters uh, of the kernel. And so what I finally figured out was I could do this. This command here and edit the uh, the arguments for it, and it would give me you know like the the what the current environment variables and you know like the 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 main disk and everything rootfs where it was located that type of stuff. And I just added um, let's see. Just added this guy, and so basically what I'm telling it here. Is to you know when it does boot, just boot to a shell form, um, and so then just run boot here, booty. <laughs> That's what I'm after. <laughs> so yeah, then at this point, you know, it just drops us off at a shell, and I can do like stuff like, and uh, you know. Then, so we can see here it's like a, a Linux ARM variant. Um, and then at this point, you know, I can start perusing around the device looking for configuration files or other things that are out there, um, that type of stuff. Uh, so like this is kind of what it looks like when, you know, you'll go through the boot process and, um, and then get dumped off at a shell and you have it via like a hardware interface. So. Um, I'm just going to turn this off for a second and show you guys what it actually looks like here. So, uh, yeah, so this is basically it, you know, and then I've got the, the shikra hooked up um, and wired up to the little, little ports on here. So, that's the demo, and I am cruising, so I might have a little bit extra time here. Maybe I should just slow down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was kind of cool. We did a little bit of the demo. I'm in the process of uh, doing some responsible disclosure. There are certain things with that device um, that I am yet to report. So I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I named it by name. But we'll we'll get to that. I'll publish the details later. Um, definitely for sure. So uh, this is the uh, um, a little bit about JTAG. I haven't had a chance to do too much with um, like actual JTAG stuff. I just got to do it recently with a uh, um, another home automation hub uh, that I've been working on, and uh, this is where I found out that uh, you know on 1.8 volt systems uh, you need like a a, a different um, uh, interface than the Shikra to uh, actually get on there. And so uh, the JTAGulator is, is really awesome for this stuff. Uh, it'll help you find the uh, test data in, test out, um, the clock, and the mode select. And what JTAG will allow you to do is, um, it's, it's basically like a hardware debugger. Um,
Okay, so back here. Um, yeah, so Open OCD is the what's that? Oh, uh, Open OCD is the uh, uh, like a um, one of the tools, um, and it's it's free and it's open source. Um, it's useful for uh, starting up like a GDB session, and it'll start like a local Telnet shell uh, on your local host, and then you can uh, use that to access. Um, like GDB and do some of the hardware uh, stuff there. So the JTagulator is awesome for finding the pinout, but as I uh, recently uh, also learned, it's not like a uh, JTAG interface. So um, what I did recently with the project that I'm working on now is uh, actually went online and uh, bought a JLink uh, adapter and like a breakout board for the the little interface um, that I needed to hook up to. And I'm hoping that'll work. Uh, but yeah, just a, a short little clip note, because it totally screwed me up when I, I, was, I was going through it. Um, the JTagulator will find the pinout, but it will not be the interface. Um, so finally, the last thing that uh, I, I kind of briefly mentioned, um, the uh, like dumping flash. Um, so like in the instances, say you're working on a device and you know, you've tried going through the, um, to grab it while it comes down over the wire, but maybe they're doing like certificate pinning or something like that on the device and you can't man in the middle the SSL traffic or TLS to like pull it out of the, the network firmware. So, and in, in, in that instance, you know, sometimes it's just easier to try and pull it uh, straight off the chip itself. And so, um, this is one of the things that's awesome about the sex via hex class is, uh, and the thing that I was the most excited about um, for this class was dumping the, f like, the software for a device um, via like physical means like this. And so uh, here what I'm using is just like a Raspberry Pi. I, I tried to use the Shikra, I really did. Um, but it was coming back with errors and misidentifying the device, and it couldn't couldn't do it. So um, you can definitely use a Raspberry Pi too as like a, a UART interface and some of the other stuff as well. But I was using it here as a spy um, interface and dumped the uh, flash. And so you can see here, I went online, figured out like the particular um, the particular flash chip, and then uh, like read through the data sheet and found the like the various pins around the flash chip and as I was doing this um, also one of the things to pay attention to is as you're uh, as you're trying to do this and say the device is powered and there's uh, communications going back and forth and reading from flash and you try you try to go dump it uh, dump memory on it you're, you're it might get corrupted so the way to kind of uh, get around that fact is, uh, at, at least on the smart things, uh, what I found was um, like a little reset pad, and I grounded the reset to um, to to ground, and uh, that that held the um, the device in kind of like a halted state where it's powered, and power is flowing to the flash chip, but um, it's not like reading and writing. So then I was actually able to to dump um, the, uh, the flash with uh, flash ROM, and that's uh, the little uh, tool to do it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, so I, yeah, it's, uh, flash ROM is a little uh, open source tool um, that I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not sure who, who wrote it, but it's definitely available online, and you use, um, you use it to, uh, basically there's just like a read flag, and then it, it, it dumps it out to a file on your computer. And usually when I do that, um, what I'll do is I'll do it two or three times. That way I can see if it is corrupted, you know, and I'll do a hash of it of the various different ones that I get. And if one of them's off, then I know, you know, I'll keep doing it until I get it right or change my formula up, that type of thing. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about hardware hacking, uh, I can definitely uh, suggest uh, the sex via hex class. It's, uh, it's super awesome. Uh, check it out. Uh, Zibiter does an amazing job. Um, and uh, it's Stephen Ridley it's, uh, and um, uh, Joe Fitzpatrick, I think, yeah.
Um, and uh, the other one is obviously Joe Grant's class. Uh, I, I really wanted to take it here at DerbyCon. I, uh, I didn't get the chance. It was sold out fast. Um, but uh, maybe next year I'll, I'll get to take it. A couple of blogs that are really great. Um, there's Craig Hefner's blog. If you're doing anything with like Soho routers, you'll probably come across that one. Um, and then Don't Stuff Beans Up Your Nose is uh, Stephen Ridley's uh, blog as well. You'll find some of his material there. And so, I don't know, I, I hope that um, maybe, you know, you'll be able to take some of this material and it'll give you the ideas, the tools that you need, and kind of encourage you to go out and, you know, do your, do, do research on these devices because there's, there's so much out there to play around with uh, and all of these uh, IoT vendors or people bringing devices to market, they're just, they're just hauling ass to get their product out there. So they aren't thinking about security um, much at all. And so I think that it's uh, definitely up to us uh, as you know, the security community to play, like, at least get these devices into, um, into a better state than where they're at now. Um, so I, I hope that uh, the material here has been useful and you can do it too, it's fun. Um, and uh, that's pretty much what I have for you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say like thank you to uh, the DerbyCon staff, um, uh, other researchers out there like you guys. Uh, I totally would not have been able to like learn some of this stuff uh, without you. So, uh, and if you're interested in getting in touch or whatever, check out securityevaluators.com. Um, the uh, GitHub link there. I've started like collecting a bunch of firmware and posting it up on GitHub, so you can check that out. Um, check out my Twitter, and uh, I think that's about it. So, thanks guys. Are there any questions, I guess? Yeah, I can, I can answer questions, yeah. Yeah, so the, the question was uh, where to find different data sheets. I mean, uh, for the most part, what I'll just do is like throw stuff into Google. Um, I, uh, you know, there, there are a couple of websites, I think like datasheets.ru, a lot of the Russians have uh, like really extensive collections of data sheets for whatever reason. They actually repair their hardware, so I'll find, you know, some of the stuff on like shady Russian sites, so it's not uncommon um, that I'll find them there. Any other one? All right, sweet. Oh, what's up? Oh yeah, definitely. That is actually another great resource. Uh, the FCC's website, um, if you have a device and you can figure out the FCC ID, there's uh, great, you know, internal photos, external photos, uh, the, some of the, like the RF testing and stuff like that. Yep, that's definitely a, definitely a good resource. Cool.